Hello everyone, welcome to a very special, not really episode, but squad reveal for the FM Invitational. You've probably heard me talk about it before, it is a streamer competition over on Twitch where me and 11 other contenders will take part to try and win the inaugural trophy. We haven't really got one yet, but it will come in time. There is a wooden spoon available for last place though, engraved by myself. Hopefully it won't be me. The draft took place on Wednesday and everyone got pretty much, I think, majority of who they wanted. There's a lot of good teams out there, but I think mine's the best. I'm about to reveal them all to you now, but without giving away too many tactics because there'll be spies in the midst. I know who you are. And so my team is Manchester Rovers. I am actually doing a save with them on Twitch at the moment in a tier 10 to the top. So if you haven't tuned in for that, make sure that you do. Because if you sub to me on Twitch, you can actually get yourself a player. Uh, which has been really, really good fun for all the people involved so far. We're having a great time. Already up to tier 9. Twitch.tv slash micromanch14 if you are interested. You're going to want to follow that anyway. Because that's the only way you can follow this competition. Kicking off on Saturday at 8pm. So, the actual squad itself... Ignore the goalkeepers. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters too much about goalkeepers. You can see who they are. Um, the likely is that Martin Dubravka will be my number one. And I think I got him for £12.5 million. Pounds. We had a £500 million pound budget. And that sounds like a lot of money. But when you factor in it's 23 players, and there are a lot of players, um, that essentially <laughs> went for quite a lot of money. I, I, I definitely didn't panic buy one. We'll get on to him later. Um, but yes, so Martin Dubravka will probably be my number one goalkeeper. There's a lot of good attributes to stand out here. Noticeably, uh, reflexes, one-on-ones, area reach, handling, all 15 or above. I'm pretty happy with him at 12.5 million. Not bad. The other one was a, a mix of taking the nick a little bit, and that is Loris Karius. I don't really need to say more than that. As long as we don't play him in any big games, I'll be absolutely fine. Defence is probably where I think I maybe have kind of got the edge on everybody else. The best thing that I went for while I was doing the draft is I wanted to be able to play a variety of formations. So I made sure that I got a lot of versatility. And more importantly, I could arrange from anything from three at the back to five. And I can do all of those things with my defence here. And I have to say, I think that I've done exceptionally well. Considering the most expensive player in there was Jose Jimenez, who is probably my uh, my standout centre back. Okay, and I got him forty seven million pounds, which isn't too bad at all. I mean, his mentals are brilliant, his physicals are brilliant, and his his technicals are excellent as well. 16, 15, 16 for heading, marking, and tackling, respectively. Very, very good. Mentals excellent. He'll be the number one defender really at the back. Who partners him though is completely up for debate because I've got another three. Really top-class centre-backs in Joel Matip, who obviously is very good in the game, being uh, Liverpool, one of Liverpool's first-team defenders. Um, just really, really well-rounded. A good aerial player as well to have, which I think is going to be important. Diego Carlos, who's just like a physical sort of tank. Uh, he was dirt cheap as well. I only got him for about £23 million, something like that, which I think is a great bit of value. Uh, he's got attributes everywhere that you need them to be, especially in the mentals here. 19 bravery stands out. I'm happy with him. And, of course... I got Edin Militao, and now Edin Militao as well, absolute bargain, got him for around about £19 million, pounds. and when you look at his attributes, yeah, he's pretty good. The other thing is that with him is that he can play anywhere around the back, maybe apart from the left-hand side, but I've got that covered, so don't worry. Either way, he's going to be brilliant. Because it's a league, there's going to need to be rotation, and that's where I think not everyone else has mastered it. I think a lot of people have got very good starting 11s. I think I've got a really well-rounded, balanced squad. You move on to the wing backs, and I think I, you can't really get a better player than Odria Zola. He was, again, cheap around about 18 million, something like that. He's got everything that you need. He's really pacey. My wing backs are definitely going to be a big part of my game, I'd like to think. Uh, they're always important in football, regardless. But he's got the attributes where I need them to be. His technicals are decent. Mentals are pretty much all in double figures, but nothing too high, which is a little bit concerning, but physically also very, very good. And his opposite number on the left-hand side is Kieran Tierney, possibly one of the best, most well-rounded defenders uh, and even players you can get in the game. There's so many things here. Actually, every single attribute apart from penalty taking is in double figures. Make of that what you will. Physically brilliant, mentally brilliant, technically solid. Very, very happy. He can also play as a centre-back, wing-back, left-back, everywhere. Love him. Love him, love him, love him, love him, love him. And to cover both of those positions, I went for a very cheap option at £5 million for Serginho Dest, obviously the youngster who is at Barcelona. The Americans has got everything you want. He can literally play up either flank in any of the positions up there. He's got blistering pace. He's very good mentally. Technically not fantastic. He's definitely very good going forward. Less good at the back. But he's not going to be my first, you know, first choice wing back. So it's not really too much of an issue. 
My first pick was Joshua Kimmich, and I think that raised a lot of eyebrows in the draft, but actually, I think he is one of the smartest calls you can make. He was probably one of my more expensive players, I think he was probably the most expensive at around about 67 million-ish, but when you see why, he can play anywhere on the pitch apart from at left back, so you can play him at mid, centre mid, defensive mid, right back, wing back, centre back, anywhere. Physically pretty decent, mentally incredible, technically also an incredible footballer. Where I play him doesn't really matter. He is going to be fitting into any of the systems that I've got sorted. I'm not going to go through them all here. You're going to have to see the tactics for yourself when we actually get started into the Twitch. But imagine the fact that it's probably going to be, it could be a diamond, it could be a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, a 5-2-1-2. I've basically got it so I can play any formation. Like, literally any formation with this bunch of players. But Joshua Kimmich is going to be absolutely crucial to everything that I do. If he can stay fit, I fancy that I can win this tournament quite easy, Not easily. Midfield was a bit of a tricky one, to be fair. Because quite a lot of the really big boys sort of went early. De Bruyne went um, and loads of them. My bargain was Fabinho. Obviously, possibly the best central defensive midfielder in the world um, and probably in the game how much did i get him for 28 million an absolute steal the guy is just just amazing physically brilliant mentally insanely good and technically as well fantastic he is going to be a massive part of this squad just the midfield of him and kimmich and some of the other players i've got in here it's just gonna be so so good i actually didn't pick that many liverpool players as i thought i would um, mainly because they were all a bit too expensive. But I think he he was just too good to turn down. He was my second pick. So good. I might as well move on to the other midfielder that I got from Liverpool, which is Genie Wijnaldum. I mean, if you want someone that can play anywhere on the pitch, you don't really get better than Genie Wijnaldum. Midfield, Dynamo, can play absolutely anywhere. He's got double figures for days. Long shots of nines, not great. Free kick taking is also not great. But the, the mentals, the physicality, the, he's just, yes. He just pick the ball up, pass it on. Pick the ball up. Beat a player, pass it on. Genie is magic. Absolutely magic. And he was one of my other more expensive players at around about 58 million, I think. But so worth it. I got in some other kind of like bargain value players that would just work as a kind of workhorse. And Jeffrey Condogby is definitely one of them. Because he's a very good player on FM. We all know Jeffrey Condogby. We all know how good he can be. The fact that he's a physical tank and he's mentally very good. Just make him perfect, just to sort of step in when one of my players gets tired, or just to try and take a match away from people. I look at him as a sort of like budget Yaya Torre. He's got that same sort of physicality and ability to carry the ball um, that Yaya had. And for £5 million, also, it was an absolute steal. Had to get him in. You can say the same for Bruno Gomares, who was actually at £4.8 million. He's obviously very young in this, and he does get better in the actual game itself, but. I still think as a kind of general workhorse and as a body, pretty decent. You can tell that I really I've gone for a lot of kind of like defensive sort of midfielders that are just really good at hard working and ball carrying, and that's because I've got so much flair sort of in my mind up front and in the advanced midfielder roles and on the wings that I don't really need to worry too much about anything else. I'm just really, really looking for that kind of big workhorse midfield. Win the ball back, play at a high tempo. And then we dictate the game from there. That's my mentality. And Bruno suits that perfectly. Another £5 million signing that I just couldn't I couldn't resist it is Mesut Ozil. Now, obviously, goes completely against what I said about the work rates, etc. But that's okay. Because he's going to sit in the number 10 position when I do play him, if I play him. And that's literally just for the technicals. The 19 first touch, the 18 passing, the 19 technique, 18 vision, 18 flair, composure, anticipation. He's going to be a passenger, but my God, what a passenger to have if I can get him playing well. And this might upset some Arsenal fans, but he probably will be behind Christian Eriksen, who I got in as well. Think about Eriksen, 15 million. 15 million pounds for Christian Eriksen with the technicals for days. Physically not brilliant, as we all know, but mentally pretty decent. And just, yeah, just the technicals, man. Everything in there is amazing. Set piece specialist perfect just 15 million 15 million for christian erickson so good i did bring in a couple of wingers um as well i'm not really sure if i'm going to play wingers in my primary formation but i probably will it's nice to have the ability to and i've made sure i've not really gone for elite wingers i've gone for ones that are just going to do a job and with that my musa diaby 
is certainly the man for that. Pick the ball up, run at your man. Pick the ball up, run, beat him. That's all you need to do, and then find the pass. He can definitely do that. The blistering pace of 17s on each is great. Mentally pretty decent with 16 flair, I love. Dribbling, 16. Technique, 14, solid. Off the ball, solid. He can get you a goal. He can play on the left, he can play on the right. He can play everywhere. Really, really happy with him. Just so I might be able to come in when the game stretched and just bomb on and get me some get me some goals, basically. And you might say the same for this young man, but this is a guy I have had on our draft before in the one other draft tournament I did on Twitch, and that is Rodrigo. Obviously a young wonder kid at uh, Real Madrid, and I just think he's one of those guys that plays really well in the game engine. He just plays really well in the game engine, and I just thought, you know what... I'll get him in. His vision and work rate aren't great, but the technicals are excellent. Might not have a massive part to play, but I just fancy he's going to turn up with a big goal at some point. I just feel it. I suppose technically now we're moving on to forwards, but there are some wingers, but I'll class them as forwards. Um, Troy Parrott, I bought him in because he was only literally, what was it, 500k? Um, and he's so well-rounded for a guy who's only 500 k Well-known finisher on the game, can become very good. He's got the good technical attributes. He can pretty much do everything. Yeah. Just a good backup in case worse comes to worse. This one, I think, is one that really went under the radar. And I'm surprised that not that many people sort of went for him. But Musa Mariga for £12 million? Not bad. I mean, the, the, all I need to say is physical. Just look at the physicals. That tells you all you need to know. Marry me, Musa. Unbelievable. 19 strength. Try winning the ball off him. And he's quick. And he's powerful. He's going to be amazing. I can feel it. But he's not the only kind of target man that I've gone for or pressing forward. And that's because I've also gone for Raul Jimenez. Now, he is one of the most well-rounded strikers in the game. Physicals, all very, very solid. Mentals are excellent. And his technicals are pretty good. Apparently taking a 20, just in case. Because there's probably going to be a lot of penalties in this. And if he is starting, he will be my penalty taker. I mean, penalty taking 20, it's not often you see that. He is an absolute phenomenon. And I... I Think low key shout for top goal scorer in the entire tournament. Low key. I mean, it's Jamie Vardy. How could I not? How could I not? Pace, pace, more pace. Mentals are amazing. Finishing 18. On previous FMs, he's been done a little bit of an injustice, in my opinion. He's never been as good as he actually is in real life. But in this FM, having played with him on the Leicester save and got him to the numbers that I did, Jamie Vardy could be absolutely excellent for me and you better believe that he'll probably be starting alongside my other key striker yes he's not my key striker i'll show you who is in a second he was a bit of a panic buy because i didn't realize it was my turn but he was already on my shortlist and i just went from mohammed salah mo salah oh i rarely ever get to play with him on fm but he's just so good he's just so good there were other players that i looked at i was looking at aguero i was looking at players like that but they tend to get injured and obviously because it's gonna be a long tournament no i mean mo the other thing is that you can obviously play on the right i can play him as a winger if i wanted play him as a striker dribbling finishing passing technique vision off the ball flair determination composure anticipation physicals for days he's just ultimate he's just he's just so good i could literally look at him forever either way though this is what the fm invitational looks like then so we will be kicking off our first game against mulch um he's an amazing streamer please do go and check him out um links to all the descriptions and everything will be um in the actual draft and whatnot like on the actual day We'll put in everyone's Twitch and stuff. If not, go follow at FM Invitational on Twitter. And all of the guys' details are down in there. We all follow it. So make sure you go down there and check them all out. But you can tell here, the one for me that is the big one is It's Chris. It's Chris is the is a personal rivalry between the two of us. And the fact that I get to finish both rounds against him is, is just like a blessing in disguise, really. It will probably dictate my mood come the end of the FM Invitational. There are a lot of players that have done really well. Chris is one of them, actually. You look at that back, that defence. He's probably the only other guy that I feel that his defence is a bit better, and that's literally just because he has Van Dyke. Um, but my sneaky peek, or my sneaky tip of one to watch, is Shabby. Shabby Gamer, who is... Yeah, he's, he's picked really well. He's got Schmeichel and Begovic and Gold, two very good keepers. The defence is really solid as well, to be fair. He's got Marquinhos and Titi, Tarkovsky, Bellerin, Rudiger, Guerrero, 
Luke Shaw at left back, not so good in this game as he is in real life, and I think left back might be a bit of an issue for him. But then looking at the rest of it, he's got some very so he's got some sort of trash in there. He's got Kadeem Harris, Pele, Wakib Kazri, but then the rest of the midfield you've got Kante, well known for being excellent on the FM, Jorginho, Ndidi, Abamyang, Madison, Bruno Fernandez, Richarlison, and then up front he's got Wissam Ben Yedder, who's always just such a great pick, and Edison Cavani. So Shabby Gamer for me is the one I'm really, really concerned about and the one that I'm watching out for the most but there's only one way to find out who's going to win and that is to tune in because remember everyone the actual first round of fixtures in the league kicks off tomorrow night at 8 p.m over on twitch and obviously if you want to come and watch my side of things it's twitch.tv slash micromunch 14 it's going to be immensely competitive everyone's got some pretty decent squads i'm feeling really good the second round of fixtures same time on sunday and it probably will be a bit of a late finish but you're definitely going to want to stay up for it i'm absolutely buzzing i cannot wait to hand it to some of these guys. There's a lot of personal rivalries that are built in, but there's been some fantastic banter flying around. I've really, really enjoyed myself. These guys are really, really good streamers, so I do implore that you go and check them all out. I will try and leave all their links in the description below. If not, tune in with me on Twitch, where I obviously we'll be shouting out people and giving them all a follow as and when I play them. Just thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please make sure you turn up tomorrow, 8pm UK time. And until I see you again, take care of yourselves, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe, and stay cool.